welcome to another Subnautica video of mine. This is Tess Scott here and today we're going to check out the third and final Ion Crystal Cache that I'm aware of anyways. I'm pretty sure there's only three that I, there's three that I've found so far. So this is the Blood Kelp location. I have the other two, I recorded the other two and haven't posted so uh, feel free to check those out if you're wondering where those are. I know the Dunes um, Ion Crystal Cache, the, not the Dunes, the Sparse Reef Ion Crystal Cache is kind of difficult to find. The, the Crater one, eh, not so much. But anyways, check out those videos if you if you are looking for those as well. Uh, we're at my normal starting point, my, my sea base, uh, approximately 300 meters west of the starting location. I'll go ahead and jump in on the cameras up top so you can get an idea if you haven't seen it, you know, where we're at in respects to the Aurora. I wish they would fix that, but I don't need to know that all my stuff's safely in place. Uh, there's the Aurora, floating island, way over there. Starting life pod. And without further ado, let's let's head that way. As usual, I'll try and get out of the camera there. As so usual, I'll try and hug the bottom. Hopefully, we won't have any glitching, and you'll get a good idea of how to navigate your way there. And we'll uh, check it out. So we're traveling through the kelp forest, pretty much heading straight north from my sea base, or the I think it's tail end. If you go from the tail end of the Aurora, just head straight north. It should take you close to the blood kelp entrance, but let's work through the sea kelp. The bottom of the ocean provides for us. I believe we ran into the ground there. Not good. I'm pretty sure we go over one of the mushroom forests. Like the other Ion Crystal Cache videos I've made all surface to the top and let you get a good idea of what it looks like from the surface before we descend back down to the entrance. depth of 226 meters so you should be okay in the Cyclops and most other vehicles as long as you got your basic pressure compensator on there. Moving on, I wonder if I can just dip below these islands without crashing into the ground. Another one of those electrocution guys. Pardon me but I don't know the technical name. I know I have one of my alien containment. So keep an eye out for another egg. It's kind of cool. It'd be cool if those guys dropped eggs as well. Okay, looks like we're getting close to the bottom. And pretty much just head north and just go deep down. Still 250 meters away. Looks like quite a 
ride an incline. So the field will be going quite a bit deeper. I'll go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and surface real quick and show you the, the top and then we'll continue on from there. Okay, here we are at the surface and I was afraid of this. You can't really see much. Um, you can see we're almost 1500 meters from my base and a little trick of this game if you get you check your peripherals you can see on the left side there the aurora is popping up. So you can see we're still directly I'd say north, maybe a little northeast of that tail section, and you can't I can kind of see the floating island over there to the right, but that might just be some sort of blemish. But if you're ever having a hard time, if you look straight at stuff in the distance, it's not going to pop up. But sometimes it pops up in your peripherals. So, anyways, we'll head back down, and uh, just just another note. The bottom is kind of, you kind of go into a cave, so be careful with the cyclops not to get yourself stuck in a hole you can't get back out of. Alright, we're back down at the, I keep wanting to say surface, but the bottom, the ocean. I think I stayed pretty straight, drop down into this cave. I might just jump out in the prawn suit, but. Yeah, what the heck? Let's take her down. Let's see how far down we can get. So we got quite a 150 meters more to go down. I think I'm still at a safe depth for most, you know, just your basic cyclops. I think it'll allow you 500 meters depth. Okay, we're pretty much here. I remember putting the beacon there, but I have no. There must be an entrance down there. So let's hop out, jump in the prawn suit, and continue on. I should remember to grab some snacks, eat some food, drink some water, replant some more marble melon. I always need to keep this stuff growing because it takes it takes a little while to grow. And don't be a, a dumb dumb baby and get stuck on that planter. I probably should move that thing over, but I just I don't want everything to have to regrow. And that's not lining up as usual, but that's fine. I'm not picky. As long as it lets us in here. Welcome aboard, Captain. Gregory. Okay. Where's my beacon? That's hazy. You're definitely in some sort of cave. I didn't realize how much... Yeah, that's open there, but that's definitely closed off, so... Yeah. Oh, there's my beacon. Okay, jump on down here. I don't think I need any of these resources right now. I can always come back. There is a lot of quartz. And deep shroom too. If you need deep shroom, well, we're at 500 meters. So be careful with the pressure compensators. But deep shroom is very helpful. In building the spaceship parts. Those guys are kind of yummy. Those guys are annoying. So begin. All right. There is the final ion crystal cache entrance. I thought this stuff was only mineable. I didn't know the the blood oil was still. Just dropping down like seeds. So moving on in. How far down this goes. Oh, there it is. We don't have all the cords like we saw in the previous one, but this guy has a pretty cool design on it. Let's uh, investigate closer. I don't know if I've seen that design. It's not too complicated, but def definitely different. You know, it's not the same texture. On every side so I, I like how they kind of made an effort to keep it original or unique more of these little lights that light up and what kind of artifact purple good I have one more purple artifact left so this will definitely use it I'm guessing all the purple artifacts I found were for the ion crystals so I believe we used another artifact is it the orange one to, it might have been a purple one as well to open up, you know, the lava castle open up that, the blue key. Oh, I left them at home. Oh, well. Anyways, let's put this in here and check out the inside. Ooh. It's 
kind of similar similar styles these definitely poke out a lot further got the same design as the outside and another cave system got quite you know got some plants in here this time and oops, same old pedestals that pop up cool pillars another computer system no wires popping in on this one though so maybe they're all underground and of course another data terminal let's check this out go back to the prawn and read it alien sanctuary b okay so we just found a last time so that's cool the other one the first one i found at the crater i believe was some sort of library i'm already forgetting now all right, there's our data bank data downloads alien data Alien Sanctuary B. Comparing the data on this terminal with stored translations has revealed new information about this alien sanctuary. The antechamber consists of a series of main data hubs, each adorned with an ion crystal. These are networked up to the main terminal in parallel, presumably to ensure data integrity over time. Unprecedented data complexity. Stored data was scanned into the system at the local terminal. Original data source was organic in nature. Evidence suggests that this antechamber served as a sanctuary of last resort for the aliens that built it. In the event of catastrophe, they could retreat here and somehow transfer themselves into the data hubs for preservation. What? These guys could just go from materialism to being mater materialized to just data? I wonder if we can get in there or maybe spawn one of them. That would be kind of cool, like bring them back to life. I mean, that's a heck of a way to run from a catastrophe. It's just run and download yourself onto a computer and... Hope to God somebody comes and saves you. It is unclear whether other members of the alien species ever returned here, or how many souls are backed up on the hubs, but the data stored is far too complex to reconstitute with the little information available. Oh man, it's a shame. So we have no idea if there's even any creatures in there, but you know what? Sadly, I gotta take your ion crystals, guys. It's just the way it is. So if I take your souls with them, I'm sorry. Um, maybe you should have had better bacterium protection. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm probably doomed anyway, so it's probably for the best that I go and take you down with me. What do you say? Alien 1, Alien 2, Alien 3, and... Okay. That's pretty cool, though. I'm not gonna lie, I like how they made them all different. And these little cave systems. I mean, it's kind of a sad story, you know, behind all this, but, you know, hopefully they're okay inside the ion crystals. I'll try not to run the batteries too hot when I turn them into batteries, but. Oh, I can't wait until the next update. Hopefully they maybe put in some aliens or a new ship. I mean that the Cyclops can go down to, I think mine can go down to 1700 meters, so I don't know, it talks about a deeper location in the active lava zone. I might check that out sometime, it's kind of cool, but there's really not a lot going on down there. But that's all the time I have for this video, I appreciate you all stopping in and, and watching. Hopefully if you were looking for directions to this Ion Crystal Cache, uh, I hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comments below. Hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest videos. And I'll catch you all next time. This is Tess Scott. You all have a good day.